This invitation to speak really gave me an opportunity and sent me kind of on this interesting journey thinking about the past 10 years, going from being a young artist, young art student really, into grad school and then kind of immediately becoming a teacher to other young students. Um, and then kind of striking out on my own and then becoming a business owner. So very, very different progression. And moreover, it really has given me the chance to reconnect with an artist. And I'm going to um, use her name the way that it would be traditionally in the United States, not in Japan, because she lived here for so many years, so Mayu Miyoda. Um, to reconnect with an artist who represents really my ideal of someone whose craft and life have woven together to create something that's really much greater than the individual parts. So I'm gonna spend more time tonight speaking about her, her life and the culture that supports these pieces more than the formal aspect of the pieces themselves. Um, so before transitioning to speaking about her history and the work that's on display behind me, just uh, would like to give a little bit more of a background, personal background on myself and hope that that sort of informs how her work really very deeply resonated with me. So I grew up in a small town in coastal Rhode Island. Um, my dad was and is a writer, really zany kind of idea maker. My mother, probably the hardest working woman I've ever met, as a nurse when I was growing up and as a hospital administrator. Uh, we didn't have a TV. I grew up essentially as an only child. Uh, with two half-sisters way out on the opposite coast in California. And um, so I got a lot of attention, as it were, <laughs> which is a blessing. Mostly, I mean, for me, it was a really wonderful blessing. My dad really took it upon himself to make sure that I was enrolled in every single possible art class, craft class, anything that we had. So from community, um, community classes all the way up to taking me up to Providence, which was about 45 minutes away from where we lived to go to the Rhode Island School of Design in the evenings to take the community education classes. So I basically grew up as a young person up at RISD, taking those classes with adults and other children my age, depending on what class it was. And so as I got older, it seemed really predetermined to everyone, except for me, that I would, of course, be applying to the Rhode Island School of Design. That's where I would be going to undergrad.